All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Carla Carter. I'll be the host or moderator for tonight's Basics and Foundation class. Um, and before we get, well, I'll go ahead and do the aims real quick. We're not going to do a moderation. We'll just do the aims. Um, the first aim of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the studies of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and folk science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah, and tent to inherit eternal life now. In the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. Um, we're going to go ahead and we will have, let's see who is on. Um, Okay, Miranda, you on. Miranda, give, can you lead us in prayer, please? Sure. Okay. Let's say good evening to everyone. And as we start to gather together, let us bow our heart and mind in prayer. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we are indeed thankful and grateful for this divine vision and revelation that you have made us to be partaker of. We are thankful in this day and time that you have revealed to us your long suffering, your mercy and grace by giving us of this vision and revelation and suffering our ignorance through this process of coming into a profound knowledge and understanding of you. We are thankful for the purging of our heart and our mind, and we ask that you continue to purge us of those things that should not be. And thankful for those who uh, had a heart to gather together tonight with us on this call and to hear, share, and partake uh, of those things that are to be presented tonight. And as we do this, we ask that you Keep us focused in on those things that you have prepared for us and that uh, we enjoy this meal that you have prepared for us, not only today, but every day. These are our blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you for that, Linda. All right, class, so this is the basics and foundations class, which is a little different than um, the normal traditional um, six, sorry, let me let somebody in. Setting that we normally have as far as lecture base is concerned. So what we're doing today, um, we're continuing in the words that we had on the screen today. Idolatry, image, no ignorance, reveal, life, death, carnal, spirit, faith, sin, name, title, purpose, conception, wisdom, and mystery. And so the assignment for today was to choose one or two words from this list and give a 10 to 12 minute report on those words. Um, we would like for the report to be written, but if it's not, we understand it's fine. So just kind of give whatever the Holy Spirit gives you to give tonight. Um, with that being said, I know Alfred wanted to go first, so we're gonna let you go first, Alfred. You gotta unmute yourself. Oh, I still can't hear you, Alfred. You got to unmute yourself. Mm. 
So can't hear you. I don't know how to unmute it myself. So. Can y'all hear me okay though? Yes. Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. 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 All right, Alfred, I'm gonna try to give you time to get yourself unmuted. Anybody else wanna go? Well, um Alfred's trying to get situated and get unmuted. Yeah, I'll go. Okay, Kobe, thank you. Awesome. Um, I'll find my remote turn to you first. Um, my topic is name, name and title. <clears throat> first off, what is a name? A name is a word or a set of words that a person, animal, place, or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. That sounds a lot like a title to, to me. A title is a name that, that describes someone's position. Yahweh is a name, and he gave himself his own title, Elohim. As said before, a name is a, is a word that a person or thing is known, addressed, or referred to. God, Lord, and Jesus are, are the names that the people of the world refer to our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> God and Lord are titles. God means deities. With that being said, 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, for thou, for thou there be that are called deities, whether in, in heaven or in earth, as there be deities many and glories many. How could God possibly be the name of our Heavenly Father and how could our Savior be Jesus Christ? John 5 and 43. I, I come in my in my father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another, let another come in his own name, him ye will receive. Therefore, it is no possible way that you can prove that you can prove to me that Yahweh is not the name of our Heavenly Father, and Yahshua the Messiah is not the name of our Savior. Zechariah 14 and 9. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. And in that day, Yahweh, Yahweh will prove to be a unity and with one name. That's all I have. Boy, you better. Boy. <laughs> Boy. Mm, mm, mm. Very good. Thank you. Man. I'm like about to cry. Mm -hmm. Very good, Kobe. Awesome. Anybody else want to go next? Alfred, did you get your phone together? Get it, Kobe. Alfred, you might have to um hang up and call right call back in just to try to see if we can get it unmuted or working or something. Okay, doing that. While we're waiting on Alfred, I'll go next. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Kobe, I appreciate you doing the name and the title because I was I was going to do the name and the title. And as Miranda says, I pondered the situation. And mm -hmm. I uh, I decided to do after last Sunday's class, the Sunday before the class, when no was gotten into so beautifully, I knew I had to do no in ignorance. So uh, those are the two words that I chose. And by the way, Miranda, I like the pondering because it means to look at, and you know I love that. So <laughs> let's get started. Uh, the definition, my words are no and ignorance. First of all, I'll do the definition of no, to understand as fact or truth, to apprehend clearly and with certainty, to grasp the meaning of, to recognize as being the same as something previously known, to perceive directly, to have sexual intercourse with, 
and that calls for some breaking down. Sexual means intimate. Intimate means very private, closely personal. Intercourse means dealings or communication between individuals, interchange of thoughts, feelings, etc. Now, no, uh, when I did this report, I found out that no really is a powerful word, more powerful than I looked at it before. And the second uh, definition, the second word is ignorance, and the definition, definitions, lacking knowledge or information as to a particular subject or fact. Now, key in on the words lacking knowledge, which means that it's the opposite of no. Uninformed, unaware, lacking in knowledge or training, due to showing lack of knowledge or training, that stuck out to me because one was lacking in knowledge and training and the other one was due to showing lack of knowledge or training. Unlearned, unconscious. So those are the definitions. And the way I was moved to go into my words, into my report, what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to do uh, point out something on ignorance, and then I'm going to show the contrast with no, and I'm going to keep doing that until I go through my report. So I'll say ignorance, and then I'll say no, and I'm going to use different definitions or different synonyms of these words for each talk, each discussion point that I choose. So I hope y'all can follow along. So first ignorance. And the synonym for this particular ignorance is unlearned. A common error among most of the translators of the Bible is their elimination of the revealed name of the Most High, Yahweh, and the name of his son, Yahshua the Messiah, and substituting the names of local deities of the nations among whom they dwelt, which spiritually translates into mankind following the local deities or thoughts of their imaginations. Now to offset that, the, the no definition to understand as fact or truth, the name of the creator is Yahweh who made the world and all things therein. As it was first known, made known unto Moses in Exodus third chapter, and Elohim said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall I say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Substitute Yahweh's name clearly transgresses his commandments as given in Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim to bring it to naught. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name to bring it to naught. Now, next, another ignorance. And the synonym or the definition of this particular uh, ignorance is lacking in knowledge. There was a time when Yahweh's name or purpose was not known. Exodus 6 chapter reads, and Elohim spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, but by my name Yahweh was I not known to them. Lacking in knowledge of Yahweh's purpose, uh, we read in Isaiah 48 chapter where Yahweh states, I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. Now to offset that with the definition of no, to understand as fact or truth. Yahweh made known through Isaiah in the 52nd chapter, therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. Yahshua Messiah states in John 17th chapter, O righteous father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. First Corinthians second chapter states, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. This is um, 
in reference to lacking in knowledge of Yahweh's purpose. It states, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the rulers of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of Yahweh, hidden or unseen in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the rulers of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. Next, ignorance, lacking in knowledge or training, According to information found on unitedchurchofgod.org, many people assume that the God, that God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit form what is commonly known, what form what is commonly known as the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity is usually summed up as a belief in one God existing in three distinct but equal persons. But did you realize that even though it is, it is a common assumption among many sincere religious people, the word Trinity does not appear anywhere in the Bible? In fact, the word Trinity did not come into common use as a religious term until centuries after the last books of the Bible were completed, long after the apostles of Christ were gone from the scene. Also, an article on Bible.org reads, because the word Trinity is never found in the Bible, some wonder about whether that is, this is a biblical doctrine or not. But the absence of a term used to describe a doctrine does not necessarily mean the term is not biblical. The issue is, does the term accurately reflect what the scripture teaches? Wait a minute. Now, this is where we got to go to know, again, the one that means to understand as fact or truth. Now, 2 Timothy reads, all scripture that is given by inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It did not say that the scriptures were given to be interpreted to fit man's carnal way of thinking or doctrine. Furthermore, Deuteronomy 6 chapter proclaims, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is Yahweh a unity. Ephesians 6 chapter, there is one body and one spirit, as ye, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Lastly, 1 John the 5th chapter reads, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. That is what knowledge gives you, knowledge of the truth gives you. Now, the next one on ignorance, due to showing lack of knowledge or training. I didn't say lack of knowledge, I said due to showing lack of knowledge or training. There is a misunderstanding that it is not possible to know Yahweh in his pure spirit state because in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable, etc. Now, let's examine three points on knowledge on, to uh, contradict this form or eradicate this form of ignorance. Number one, know, to grasp the meaning of, John 17 and 3, the grasp to grasp the meaning of John 17 and 3 is mandatory to understand uh, that we can know Yahweh in his pure spirit state. John 17 and 3 reads, and this is life eternal that they may might know that thou Yahweh only art the true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. Now look, the Messiah was Yahweh manifested in a fleshly body who has been made known unto us by Yahweh, his pure spirit, which is inconceivable, incomprehensible, inscrutable, etc. You'll find in Hebrews the 10th chapter where, wherefore when he, Yahshua Messiah, cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. 
First Timothy, third chapter we read, and without controversy, great is the mystery of holiness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay, number two bullet point on this, uh, knowing Yahweh in his pure spirit state. No, this definition of no, to recognize as being the same as something previously known. I thought that was very interesting. So to further squash this ignorance of the fact that we cannot know Yahweh in his pure spirit state, I chose this definition because Yahshua knew from the beginning who he was. A free, few scriptures to show this to be fact or true. Proverbs 8.22. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Now this is Yahweh Elohim or Yahshua speaking. John the 17th chapter. Yahshua makes supplication. Yahshua is making supplication to the Father saying, and now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. John 10th chapter, I, my Father, are one. John 14th chapter, Yahshua proclaims, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Final bullet point, Colossians second chapter reads, for in him, Yahshua, dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. Now, if one speaks against or denies that these writings are true, he is blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. The final point, number three, the final point on this ignorance of not knowing Yahweh in his pure spirit state the definition of no to apprehend clearly and with certainty. If one is made to turn aside to see this, to know this, to understand this, then pure spirit, and when I say this, the things that I just went over about knowing Yahweh, uh, Yahshua knowing who he is and so forth and so on. If one is made to turn aside to see this, to know this, to understand this, then pure spirit is no longer incomprehensible or impossible to understand, inscrutable or unknowable, nor inconceivable or unbelievable. Romans 1, 19 and 20 reads, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and some eternal nature so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim. Now note on this, Yahshua is Elohim. So I'll repeat, because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now, let's move on to another ignorance of being unaware of who Yahweh is. Exodus 5 and 2, and Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not Yahweh, neither will I let Israel go. Hosea 5th chapter, they will not frame their doings to turn unto their Elohim, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known Yahweh. Now, to offset that ignorance, no, uh, the no that goes with that one is to have an intimate, private, closely personal relationship with, or in other words, a form of sexual intercourse. Isaiah 62nd chapter reads, for as a young man marries a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall Yahweh thy Elohim rejoice over thee. Jeremiah 31st chapter, behold the days come, said Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 
not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said Yahweh. 2 Corinthians 6, 16, and what agreement hath the temple of Elohim with idols? For ye are the temple of the living Elohim, as Elohim has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. You cannot get any more intimate than Yahweh, our Father. And then uh, another ignorance, finally, uh, the, the last definition of ignorance, unconscious or unlearned. Psalm 73, 22 reads, so foolish was I and ignorant. I was a beast before thee. Job 34, 35. Job has spoken without knowledge and his words were without wisdom. And the final no definition that I'm going to cover to understand as fact or truth, Acts 17 chapter proclaims, for as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that the supernal nature of Yahweh is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Second Thessalonians first chapter reads, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when Yahshua Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh, and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his sons and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. In conclusion, let us hear the psalm of the whole matter. John 8, 32 wraps it up. And ye shall know, understand, apprehend clearly and with certainty, grasp the meaning of, proceed directly and have an intimate relationship with the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Very good. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Um, Alfred, did you get your phone together? Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, when it fits right in, uh, kind of what Shirley yeah, went into, and I was able to hear Kobe, and uh, I was Happy to hear his voice too. Mm -hmm. uh, my word is purpose, and as I was doing my research, that leads me that led me into another word, which is going to be predestinate. The definition I have for purpose is the reason for which something is done or made, an object to be obtained or an end to be obtained. And once again, if y'all would say we can know him as he really is and actually exists, I think is attainable. And action and cause are execution. One of the words for the other one was predestinate. To foreign to an earthly or eternal light or destiny by divine decree. And I will add to that by spirit law. Predestined, determine, appoint, or settle beforehand. Predetermination, a purpose form beforehand, a fixing or settling in advance. So I'm going to read Ephesians, the whole first chapter. I suggest everyone read it. But I'm just going to start at the ninth verse having made known unto us, and this is Paul, but he wouldn't be saying, even if this has been known to us, if that wasn't true or, or able to be accomplished. 
has it made known unto us the mystery, and it was a mystery. And I can honestly say, before I came to this teaching, by the foolishness of teaching, I didn't have a clue of what Yahweh was going to reveal to me until he revealed it unto me. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, not mine, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, but she has purpose in himself that in the dispensation and the fullness of time for which I came into this teaching, I didn't know nothing about ages and dispensation, but all of those things were explained and expressed. I'm just going to say it by Yahweh himself, or the Holy Spirit. The fullness of time that he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, which I'm going to pick up later on, because all things came forth from him. In other words, a round trip. Both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. And let me say right here to that class last night, they tried to make, seem like us, you say Yahweh is one, that that is in this him. I would ask that person this question. Can you number the stars of the heaven? Can you number the sands of the seashore? That's how vast Yahweh is. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now I want to read Colossians. One, I'm going to pick it up at the uh, 16th verse. For by him were all things created that are in heaven. And you think about the vastness of the heavens, people, in this earth, in this universe. Think about how vast that is. And also, the Messiah said, in my house, there are many, many mansions. And a mansion is not a small house. And those mansions are intelligent. How great is the depth of intelligence? See, we're only just scratching the surface. But we have that now. My point being, I don't see nothing limited in that. Intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge. But I digress. For in him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things in which all things have been permanently placed. He is the head of the body, the assembly, who is in the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he might have preeminence among all. Now, pay strictly attention to this 19th verse. For it pleased the Father that, he, that in him should all fullness dwell. He are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in bodily form. Now I want to go to uh, Isaiah 46. I'm going to start at the ninth verse. Remember the former things of old, for I am El, and there is none else. I am Elohim, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning And from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling the eagle from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it 
to pay this attention. And I will also do it. So it's Yahweh in earthen vessels carried out his will, people. And I want to go to Romans 8th chapter. And I'll start at the uh, 20, 28th verse. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image. You got to get rid of that image. Every image that you had about yourself your kind of mind itself, people, we should try to exercise. Ask somebody, say, my name is Alfred. What do you really think about me? What are some of my attributes? Don't create your own narrative to it. Let's do that on a, just a little simple thing. You might be surprised. First of all, tell them to be honest. Tell them to be honest about it. You, think, you know how I feel it. Just tell me exactly what do you see me manifested. But anyway, he must be conformed or translated into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. To whom he called, then he also justified. And that's something else we got to get learned. The Holy Spirit justified itself. Now, we're quick to try to justify and defend that old man or who we think we are. We'll defend that in a minute. But I'm telling you, the witness of Yahweh is far greater. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. And I think I'm going to stop right there. And I truly have enjoyed all the expressions and the testimony that all the sons have given that Yahweh have allowed us to meet together in these heavenly places and share his knowledge among the brethren. And also, people, keep this in mind. These letters that we are reading here that Paul actually was private letters. You go back to uh, Ephesians. He said he was writing to all the sons that were at Ephesus. But the world got access to it. But only those who Yahweh have preordained to receive of this knowledge, it has been done, will be done, and Yahweh's will is being done as I speak. I thank you. May Yahweh bless us all. All right. How about you? Very good. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you, Alfred. All right. Who wants to go next? Anybody? I will. Carly, you help me read? Yeah. Okay. My tongue is swollen. I got some, I guess maybe some shrimp with my fish sandwich from Popeyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the verse that I chose was reveal and mystery. And now reveal means to make known, to reveal applies to supernatural or inspired revelations of truths beyond the range of ordinary human vision or reason. Reveal means to make known through divine inspiration. Mystery is something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. And as Shirley and Alfred mentioned in uh, their dissertation is the world will tell you that you can't know or comprehend 
but Yahweh has revealed or made known his mystery. Now, keep in mind, mystery means something that is difficult or impossible. Now, first of all, you have to understand that Yahweh is spirit and you cannot, you cannot understand spirit with your carnal, physical, finite mind. Now, he said Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, it takes Yahweh, as he states in Matthew 11 and 27. Will you read that one for me? All right. Matthew 11, 27. This is going to be a King James version. I don't have the whole name with me. Okay. Matthew 11, 27 says... Okay. All things are delivered. And turning to his disciples, he said, All things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father, neither knoweth any man the father, save the son, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Okay, now that was now now you see your words in there. He said, No one knows the father but the son. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. So it's going to take the son to reveal or to make the father known unto you. As he states over there in John, he said, Father, make them one as you and I are one. So it's a great mystery to the world. And as I think it was Alfred mentioned, no, surely about the Trinity. There is no Trinitarian concept. That is another, that's one mystery that had to be made known that the Father and the Son, they are one. Now, Daniel 2 and 28. <clears throat> All right, Daniel 2, 28. Um, this is King James Version. No, Daniel, let me know if this is right what you want. But there is an Elohim in heaven that revealeth secrets and okay. make it known. Stop it right there. There's Elohim in heaven that revealeth secrets. Now, if he has made known or if he has revealed to you who he is, and it said that he's in heaven, so then where is he when he's revealing it unto you? That is the mystery that Yahweh in you that's our hope of glory and he made known he made that known unto us because all of this was hid in other ages and dispensations but now Yahweh have come in and he has made this he has revealed this mystery unto us that he is right here in us he ain't outside of us Yahweh in heaven reveal these secrets unto us. So if this mystery has been made known unto you, don't you know he was in your heaven when he revealed this unto you? Let's get Matthew 13 and 11 and also Ephesians 3 and 4. All right. Matthew 13 and 11. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now, see, that's when the disciples was coming unto him and asking him, why was he speaking unto them in parables? See, this is not for everybody to know. That's why it is a mystery, something that is difficult or impossible to understand because unless you know Yahweh, you cannot understand this. When he was talking to his disciples, he spoke to them in parables because then he explained or he revealed unto them what it was that he was talking about. And it was revealed unto them or made known to them through divine inspiration. Inspirations, because those that were standing around looking and listening, they didn't understand what the Messiah was talking about. Read Ephesians 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. Whereby, when you read, 
ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of the Messiah, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Okay, now you may understand my knowledge. Now, this is Paul speaking. And he said, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of the Messiah, which in other ages, it was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. How so? Because he told them all of this... As we read in Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27, no man knows the Father save the Son, and no man knows the Son save the Father, and he to whomsoever he will reveal him to. So all of this time, now the Spirit was manifested in the prophets. They were doing the things as Yahweh had them set up to do. But this was not made known unto them as it is now revealed unto his apostles and prophets, and that is the Messiah in you, is your only hope of glory. He stated over there in John 1 and about 13, where he said, as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become sons. So Yahweh have to reveal the son to you. The son have to be in you to receive those things. This is a mystery. This is something that truly is difficult to understand. It is impossible to be understood by the carnal mind because, see, the carnal mind will say, y'all just making it fit. I had somebody tell me just the other day that he was talking about <clears throat> he don't see what gold Gaza have to do with the Messiah just because it said a place of the skull. I tried to explain to him that the Messiah was fulfilling everything. He said, okay, I grant you that, but I still don't understand. It is impossible for you to understand this mystery unless Yahweh revealed it to you. And Yahweh didn't reveal this to everybody. He chose from the beginning before the foundation of the world, those that would believe, and I'm telling you right now, there's only one, and that is his son, Yahshua the Messiah. And if you be him, then you can accept these things. That's why Paul was saying that this mystery, your only hope of glory is the Messiah in you. And if you can't understand that, if you don't understand that, then you cannot receive these things. Get Romans 16 and 25 and 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. <clears throat> Ooh, I just typed that wrong. Romans 16, 25, mm -hmm. and the first Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, first Corinthians, Corinthians two, and seven. 2 and 7. Okay, Romans, okay, Romans 16, 25. Now to him mm -hmm. that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Yahshua the Messiah according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now Great. it is made manifest and by the scripture of the prophet mm -hmm. that's right that's right according to mm -hmm. the commandment of the everlasting Yahweh made known to all nations for the obedience of faith Great. So the only Great wise to the only wise Elohim be glory through Yahshua the Messiah forever. So now do you see how you you can go ahead? Oh, let me go back. Hold on. Let me go back to the next chapter. Mm -hmm. Um did I skip that hold up? Seven, Romans 17 and 1. Oh, no, that's First Corinthians 1. Mm -mm, never mind. No, that's the last. Okay. That was okay. the last of it. Okay. Okay, go back up to that 26th verse. Okay. Romans 16, 26. Romans but it 16, has to 26. be Yahweh in you revealing these things unto you. Read it. Mm -hmm. But now it's made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophet, 
according to the commandment of the everlasting Yahweh, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Okay, so now this is being made manifest by the scriptures. And what are the scriptures? The law and the prophets. According to the commandment of the everlasting Elohim, he made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith. Now, faith was one of the words. So what is faith? It's having confidence in that that you cannot see with your natural, physical, finite eyes. You have that confidence in Yahweh that he is able to do above all that he say he will do for you. That, when you start looking at the mysteries, the mystery of Yahweh, how that he was right there in us and we didn't know it. That's a great mystery. But now he has come in and revealed it or made it known. And one of the definitions of reveal was to make previously unknown information known. That was previously unknown to us that Yahweh was in us, that we are Yahweh. Now, Yahweh have come in and declared and showed us how we are him. The first aim is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. So we have come to know that now. We're not guessing now. We're not ignorant about that now. So now we can, Yahweh has established our faith in him by making known or revealing himself unto us. Listen to Lasagna last night and she was talking about the attributal makeup of Yahweh. We have that same makeup. But see, we didn't know we were Yahweh. We didn't know how to apply wisdom and knowledge and understanding as we should. But it took Yahweh to come in and reveal that unto us. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. Hallelujah. All right, First Corinthians 2 and 7. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh hid in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which Yahweh ordained before the world unto our glory. Now we speak the wisdom of Yahweh hidden in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which Yahweh ordained or set up before the world was unto our glory. Now, do you now look up the word glory for me right quick? Because that was so pretty to see how you take that glory and you apply it right now unto yourself. Because see, this ain't talking about something forfeit, something way off from you. <clears throat> glory. High renown or honor won by notable achievement, um, honor, acclamation, recognition, notability, credit, um, majesty, nobility, beauty, greatness, elegance. Uh, let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. um, praise, Go worship. Spiritual meaning of glory. Is uh, see, glory is used to describe the manifestation of Yahweh's presence as perceived by humans according to the Abrahamic religion. Okay, I just the, the manifestation of Yahweh's presence. So he had to reveal his very presence unto us. He manifested himself and he revealed himself unto us. So we no longer have to guess who, what, or where Yahweh is. We now know because he has revealed that mystery unto us. So we can see him as he really is and as he actually exists. That is the wisdom. 
is the knowledge. That is the understanding that Yahweh has given unto us. We can see him now. And as he put it over there in John, our eyes have seen and our hands have handled of the word of life. That's the mystery that has been revealed unto us down here in this day and age. I'm going to get two more and I'm going to close it out. Colossians 1, 26, Ephesians 1 and 9. All right, Colossians 1, 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his son. Okay, this mystery had been hid from ages and from generations, but now it's made manifest to his son, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory or his presence of this mystery among Gentiles, which is the Messiah in you, the hope of glory. He made known. Yahweh revealed this unto us. Now let's get Ephesians 1 and 9, and I'm going to close out with it. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in so the see, dispensation... It is Yahweh. Read. Go ahead. Go ahead. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So now if you can understand that, it is no longer a mystery unto you, and it is because Yahweh has revealed it unto you. I hope you've gotten something out of it, and I thank you. All right, hallelujah. The next verse ties to Alfred's, uh, Alfred's uh, testimony, huh? I think she just did no also. <laughs> she did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of us tying together. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to go? Uh, Carla, Alex, and I are going to go together. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. That's good. Very good. Okay, so he is doing death and life. And so he's going to go ahead and uh, start with the scriptures. Go ahead. The definitions. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Death is, a, is the permanent irresistible. Irreversible. Irreversible. Irreversible action of all biological function. That sustain a living organism. Brain death is sometimes used as a legal definition of death. The remains of a previously living organism normally begin to decompose shortly after death. Death is an inevitable universal process that eventually occurs in all living things. Life, the existence of an individual human, animal, plant, or organism. The period between birth and death. The scriptures for death are Romans 8 and 6. Okay, Romans 8 and 6. For to be, <laughs> for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. John 5 and 24. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Um, and John 4 and 25. John 4 and 25. 25. 11 and 25. No, I'm sorry, John 11, John 11, 25, sorry. All right. Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And the ones for life are John 14 and 6 and John 17 and 3. All right. John 14 and 6. Yahshua saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the I said truth, truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And John 17 and 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true El, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. All right, so that was his part. He was going to um, do the definitions and the scriptures. And so what we did was we actually, we spent a lot of time uh, reading through John where he goes on and he's talking about um, the fact that in him was life and the life was the light of man. And so we continue to see that life and light are gonna be synonymous as they are being described. And then we also uh, were talking about the fact that life that you read about in the dictionary, right? This is what we talk about all the time in class. It's Yahweh's definition, our spiritual definitions are going to be different. And so that's why we were working to see, okay, what does it say in the dictionary? And then what do we get in the Bible? So there was one other piece that we wanted to uh, pick up in Leviticus 17 and 11. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So then we went into the Elohim book and we picked this up because what they do is they talk about Yahshua and they talk about the blood uh, representing Yahshua. And we know this from where we see it in the tabernacle, right? And how we talk about the altar and... Um, how we talk about Yahshua being that sacrifice. So I'm gonna to try to find it quickly. There were just three parts um, in here. And what they talked about is that the, so I'm on page 39 in the third volume. It said, and so we're continuing this, the life is in the blood. The physical body is sustained by the circulating of a reddish fluid through well-defined pathways called blood vessels by a muscular pump. The heart, which is situated in the chest cavity toward the left side, this organ, the heart being located in the bosom of the physical body or holy place typifies Elohim or the word of Yahweh who dwells in the bosom of the father and the blood flowing out from it to every cell, fiber, tissue and organ of the physical body and sustaining them donates that all life is in the son or comes from the son of Yahweh and further denotes his love for all mankind for no cellular tissue of the body is discriminated against whether it be red, blue, white, or any other color. So they're making an association between him being a life-giving giving spirit and this representing the attribute of love. So then they go on, there was just, um, so if we go down a little bit further on that page, it continues to talk about, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the author. So it gives you that quote. And then it goes on to say, let us repeat that it says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The divine significance or interpretation of the above statement is that the real life, which is Elohim, was manifested in Yahshua, the Messiah, it was not the physical body or actual blood of the Messiah that was the real genuine sacrifice, but it was the life or spirit which was manifested 
in that body that was the real thing. And so then it goes on to be very specific. And they talk about the fact that the blood is nothing without the oxygen that lives within it. And then it talks about the fact that that oxygen is representative of the spirit of Yahweh. So I'm gonna read that really quickly. In support of the above mentioned facts, we find that the blood of our physical body carries oxygen, which is likened unto spirit. And it is this oxygen, which is in the blood, that is the real, genuine, life-giving substance of our physical body. If the blood is deprived of this oxygen, the body cannot live. So again, this principle of how physically as well as spiritually our creator is giving us life, right? And so it says the oxygen is an invisible gaseous substance, but nevertheless, it is vitally important to the proper functioning of every integral part of our physical body. Could one foolishly deny its importance because it is invisible? Every cell of the physical body urgently needs this invisible substance, which is present in the blood to survive. So then there was other, there was just one other part that I wanted to quickly go to. And it talks about the fact that within this blood, there are these buffers, right? And how these buffers uh, protect us spiritually and physically from invasions, right? And so it says, there are other functions that are performed by the blood, which perform Tray spiritual things. For instance, the blood contains a remarkable system of buffers, three in all, that keep it at a constant reaction, slightly alkaline, despite whatever one might eat. So remember, this is this notion that we're walking through this world and we are having to absorb all of these different experiences right and we even talked the other night about you're listening to speakers and you're having to listen to these different testimonies but again the buffers allow you to discern and they allow you to hold on to what is nutritional and will sustain the body and to reject what is going to be damaging or death to the body so it goes on to say these buffer systems are the protein the phosphate and the bicarbonate. These are all important for if the reaction of the blood were to vary from its constant reaction, it would amount to sudden death. Whenever we unwittingly eat an overabundance of acid foods, the buffers in the bloodstream go to work immediately and absorb the shock of this tide of acid and neutralizes it with the result that there is no change in the reaction of the blood. So again, if we are grounded, if we have a strong foundation, whatever we are hearing in class, whatever we are experiencing in this world that uh, is not correct, that is carnal, that is a man's interpretation and does not align with this vision, we will be able to stay, as they say, um, alkaline, right? Stay at homeostasis, stay calm, stay grounded, stay strong in this. And again, it will be life-giving to us and we will not suffer a death as a result of the lies or the deceit that we are being subjected to. This faithfulness, and I skipped over some things, this faithfulness and steadfastness on the part of the blood is typical of Yahweh Elohim. For I am Yahweh, I change not. So again, when we become one with him, we will change not regardless of what we are exposed to, right? Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed, and we will not be consumed. Likewise, the same spirit abiding in our hearts keeps us forever steadfast and unshakable, and we are able to withstand everything that Satan can throw at us to overcome us. As the apostle stated, as Apostle Paul stated, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in him. 
So that was our report. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very good. So proud of you, Alex. And he actually got the invite today. <laughs> and for him to come up with that, actually, maybe an hour, maybe 30 minutes before class started, for him to actually come with that's really good. Very good. And you too, Sonia. Very good for you. Very good, you guys. Awesome. Who wants to go next? I'll go. I'll go. Um, okay, so mine is a rough draft because I it's tax season still. I was actually shocked that I was able to um take time to get it out. Not shocked, but I I asked y'all for this, so he did that for me. And so bear with me. I tried to do two words, but I just could not. And last week when Charmaine actually started giving the definition of no, like I was like, oh, I just looked these words up. She's giving my testimony. What is she doing? Oh, that's so beautiful. I mean, Charmaine was on fire, fire, like fire, fire. So I thought that was beautiful. And then when Shirley started and I was like, oh my goodness. Oh, the unity. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. And then just kind of, I mean, it was perfect set up. It was, it was meant for Kobe to go first to get, get the tone set. Like everything was just perfect tonight. I just, I'm just so overjoyed. So anyway, without further ado. Let me give my, um, what I have. So the words that I chose were initially, well, let me just read. I initially chose the word no and conception, but upon my research with the word no, I found it really hard not to bring in the word carnal to compare with the information I found. So when you look at the word no, it means the following. And that's another thing too. So I didn't even really get a chance to get the carnal because my everything on no is too long. So bear with me. These are the definitions of no. Be aware of through observation, inquiry, or information. Be able to distinguish one person or thing from another. To have sexual intercourse with. To perceive directly, grasp in the mind with clarity or certainty. To regard as being, I'm sorry, to, be, to regard as true beyond doubt. To have fixed in the mind to have experience of, to be able to distinguish, recognize as distinct, knows right from wrong, to discern the character or, I'm sorry, to discern the character or nature of, to possess knowledge, understanding, or information. Um, this definition, these are some of the, um, well, this is one more definition I'm doing some synonyms. Um, to give a particular name or title, which ties into Kobe's first testimony. Um, these are the synonyms. Taste. I had no clue that the word no was synonymous to taste. Taste, discern, understand, recognize, experience, to apprehend clearly and with certainty. To apprehend clearly and with certainty. To have in to have info in your mind, to have a clear, complete idea of something. Those are all definitions of the word no. Those are a lot of definitions. I'm sorry. Those are a lot of different definitions that pertain to different parts of the purpose. Keep in mind that the ultimate goal is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. There are a lot of people who believe that you can't know God or Yahweh. You even have people who think that you can't know Yahweh in his pure spirit state. However, it is eternal life to do so. Hopefully I can shed some light on this topic. Let's break down some of the definitions and give some biblical examples of each. So I kind of did similar to what Shirley did, um, actually. So I'm going to break down a couple of these real quick. And so we look at the definition um, or the synonym taste. When the 74 people saw the Elohim of Israel, they did eat and drink and then you have john six fifty three. it says except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you he was saying you have to know him that's talking about taste matthew uh, 16 28 barely i say unto you there be some standing here which shall not taste death let me mute somebody out hold on I hear moving around and 
all that. Let me mute my child out. Thank you. All right. Um, till the, I'm sorry. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till, the, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom ever. Uh, oh. What is that saying? Oh. Have you ever thought about why COVID-19 takes away your sense of taste? That's just a question mark. All right. Um, also, I have Abraham. This is not taste. This is a different definition. Abraham believed Yahweh, and that was accounted unto him for righteousness. Then Abraham said, how will I know? There is a difference between believing and knowing. The definition of believe is to have confidence or faith in the truth in the truth of something, to think that something is true, correct, or real. No is to be certain, though. So the difference between believing and knowing. And the scripture where it says they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. And we'll talk about the foreknowledge of Yahweh in a minute, and we'll talk about John the 14th chapter in a second as well. Now, um, let me pull this back up. Uh-oh, wrong page hold on get back to the page first one says to be one of the definitions says to be aware of through observation inquiry or information so to know anything by this definition you have to be made aware of something through observing it inquiring about it or by information given about it this brings in the third fourth and sixth aim of this school which are Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called laws of nature and powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the studies of the scripture, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult science. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. So an investigation is warranted. A detailed Thorough investigation is required. Study to show thyself approved. Now, it doesn't stop there because you can't study upon eternal life, but eternal life is predicated on you knowing. We'll get to that in a minute. Yahshua said in Luke 17, 20 through 21, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of Yahweh is within you. Now, he didn't say it is going to be in you. He said it's in you. That should give you a clue of where you must go and how it has to be done. Yahweh made his ways known unto Moses and his acts to the children of Israel, Psalms 103 and 7. He gave them a law to observe and to keep. In Deuteronomy 6, 25 says, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahweh our Elohim as he had commanded us. But this did not give them eternal life. It was necessary, though, to lead them to the Messiah. He also told the children of Israel to be still and know that I am Yahweh. And they did that by observing his acts. Observe means to conform one's action or practice to something such as a law, right, or condition. And it also means to see, watch, perceive, or notice. The next definition I want to deal with is to be able to distinguish from one person or thing from another. This is where the seventh aim comes in at, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, and Satan, and his demons operating the mystery and ignorant on earth through the dispensations of time. This takes me back to the garden. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. In the carnal mind defined transcript, it was said that Adam knew what Yahweh had said about not touching or partaking of the tree, but what he did not know is what death was. He had no knowledge of death. After partaking of the tree, he knew the difference between good and evil. It, was, it is good to obey and evil to disobey. When it talks about the light, the light is every man that cometh into this world. That has been explained that the meaning of that is that Yahweh has given everybody a sufficient amount of intelligence 
to know the difference between right and wrong. Hopefully this will tie in later. The next definition is to have sexual intercourse with. Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived and had a child. The spiritual application is that Yahweh knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. His intelligence came together with his knowledge and wisdom and just became you, me, and everything else. This is why I initially chose conception as the partner word with no, but I have something else in mind. Volume three of the Elohim book, page 15, the second paragraph down states, as divine intelligence is the crown of the super incorporeal form and is the highest attribute ruling over all of the other attributes and coordinating their functions, so the nervous system of the physical body dominates, commands, and coordinates all of the other systems of the physical body. Yahweh is intelligent himself. And this intelligence supersedes all other intelligences, whether it be of angels or of man. Likewise, there must be a physical manifestation in our body to show forth this attribute so our nervous system, through which our mind functions, is the highest system of our body. The fullest capabilities and capacities of our nervous system have not been discovered, neither does any man know the depth or the intelligence of Yahweh. From divine intelligence stem divine wisdom and knowledge, working as a pair and manifesting the next highest degree of excellence. Remember, each attribute is perfect within itself. David wrote of the wisdom and knowledge, understanding of Yahweh, Proverbs, the second chapter, and recognized their excellence. One needs only to think of the polytechnical makeup and operation of the universe or the physical body to make him declare the superiority of this awesome pair. By the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh, the universe in its totality was created. And it functions with unerring accuracy and infallibility. The corresponding systems of the physical body, which are paired together to bring about a high degree of excellence and performance second only to the nervous system, are the reproductive and endocrine systems. Is there a greater degree of attainment than the ability to create or reproduce oneself? This is accomplished by means of the reproductive system and the immigrant system working together in their capacities and forming an inseparable bond. The rep reproductive system never forgets how to produce the same copy and the immigrant system supplies the stimulus and substance for such copy copying or reproduction and maintenance. The immigrant system supplies all the wants and needs of the body without conscious effort. These two systems are really the backbone of the physical body, and the prophet Isaiah wrote of the two corresponding spiritual attributes, wisdom and knowledge, thusly. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times and the strength of salvation, Isaiah 33 and 6, end quote. So when you look at the word reproduce, re means again or once more. Producing the same thing again is what reproduce means. This is another keynote in understanding who you are and where you come from. We are the offspring of Yahweh. That means we were reproduced. Something had to be first produced in order to have reproduction. When Yahweh took on shape and form as Elohim, from that state, from that condition, from that substance, which is wisdom and knowledge, he reproduced everything that you see and don't see. His spirit just became everything. Aya, Asher, Aya, I will be what I will to be. He demonstrated that to Moses at the bush. I will to be the rod. I will to be the serpent. I will to be the disease. I will to be the cure. I will to be the blood. I will to be the water. I will to be the bush. I will be, I will to be the fire. I will to be the angel and I will to be you, Moses. That's why his DNA is in everything. Yahweh is knowledge. 
It is his substance. Intelligence is the source. His wisdom and knowledge is the substance. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So if his image is made up of his attributes, the man is too. If his likeness is made of these attributes in an abstract, intermediate, and concrete form, the man is too. You are spirit, soul, and body. The soul is an extension of the spirit, and the body is an extension of the soul. You existed once without the body. The body is not you. The eggshell is not the egg. We have to come to the realization of who the you really is, and we'll get to it. The last definition we will use in, um, is to proceed directly, to grasp in the mind with clarity and certainty. This is a psychological mission. It came down psychologically. It has to return psychologically. It is all done in the mind. That should be another clue as to who and where you are. If the kingdom is in you, where and who are you? You are the mind or the soul of that vessel that carries you around. You must be translated into the kingdom that is right there in you. That is why Yahshua came in. That is what Yahshua came in to accomplish. Ephesians 3, 19. And to, and to know the love of the Messiah, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with, the, with all the fullness of Yahweh. John 17, 1 through 3 says, first verse, these words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee, colon. Now, after the colon, that means something has to be explained. And this is the explanation of how this is done. This is how he is going to glorify the son. Second verse, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. So it is done by Yahshua giving something to the elect. Yahshua is glorified by giving something to the elect that Yahweh gave him from the beginning. And what is it that he's given? What is eternal life? The third verse. And this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true El, and Yahshua the Messiah whom thou hast sent. So that means the gift that Yahshua is giving is knowledge. Knowledge of what? Yahweh, as he really is and actually exists. Eternal life is to know Yahweh. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 says, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. This is a conjunction. There is a conjunction there. And is joining two thoughts. No man knows the Father except the Son and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. It doesn't come by observation, but it has to be revealed. Where is the kingdom? In you. So where is the revealing done? In you. How is Joshua going to get in you to reveal something to you or to give you something? Realize who you are. The scripture says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It didn't say your body was the Holy Spirit. It says, so your body is, so your body is not it. It didn't say you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It said your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So that means your body is not you. That scripture tells you who you are. You are made up of spirit, soul, and body, right? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which you have of Yahweh and you are not your own? Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his. Did he mention, did he mention anything about your soul? Well, guess what that means? The soul is you. That's who and what has to be 
translated. Your soul has to be translated back to the spirit that is in you. Yahshua is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now notice, he didn't say no man goes to the Father. He said no man comes to the Father. That lets you know where he was when he said that. He was right there with the Father, so much so that's who that is. No man can come back to the Father or come back to consciousness or come back to the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, but by the truth. So this gospel of reconciliation leads you to that consciousness. How do we get down here? I'm not talking about down in a physical place. I'm talking about a state of consciousness. Adam and Eve were standing in the same physical place that they were that they were in before and after the fall in their conscience. After the transgression by one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world. I don't have much time to tackle carnal in this report because there is just so much to know about no, pun intended. It is eternal life to know Yahweh. It is possible to know him. Romans 119 talks about that which may be known of Yahweh. It is possible to know, not to guess or just believe, but to actually know beyond doubt, to have it fixed in your mind. Yes, you must believe the report. And after your belief, you are sealed and knowledge is passed unto you. That is how you believe. You believe by knowledge. The experiences or how your faith is established and wisdom and knowledge stabilizes you. I have to conclude this report because it is way over time, but it will. But I will continue with conception and carnal in a later report. But it is really important to know the reality. The types and shadows are okay for a time, but they're but they are just types and shadows. The Romans, hold on, y'all. Let me see what, what we got going on. We got to know it. We got to know it. We got to know it. Mm-hmm. See if you still found whoever it is making noise. Okay. Here we go. Uh, where was that? Uh, the Romans 118 and 20 are, were good to bring you to the point, to a point, but you must have a profound knowledge of the truth. Some people say and think as long as they know something about Yahweh, then they're okay. So they don't try to learn anything else because they feel safe to stay out of the doctrinal debate and so forth and so on. But I tell you that you should be, you should do a detailed investigation. He told us to try the spirit, try the knowledge that is pres- presented to us. That means you have to investigate. They had to examine the whole lamb to see whether or not it had had any spots or blemishes. The world, know, the world knows something about Yahweh too. The demons know the name is Yahweh too. They also know that the uh, name of the Savior is Joshua. So just having that knowledge isn't going to cut it. It's what you do with the knowledge. Can you obey the truth? Eternal life is to know, but also know this. Second Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10 says, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. When, Yah- when Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall be who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of Yahweh and from the glory of his power when he shall come to be glorified in in his sons and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Where did he say he would be glorified at? In his sons. Remember who you are? Not talking about that body. In the mind. It is a psychological transition, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh. So, yes, you have to know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. I'll close with this. Deuteronomy 28, 58 through 68. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, Yahweh thy Elohim, then Yahweh will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sickness and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of. And they shall cleave unto thee also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. Then will I, I Yahweh bring upon thee until thou be destroyed and ye shall be left 
few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim. And it shall come to pass that as Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from out the land whither thou goest to possess it. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shall and there there thou shalt serve of the God which that which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall thy soul of thy feet have rest. But Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing eyes, and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, what Elohim it were even, and at even thou shalt say, what Elohim it were morning, for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see, and Yahweh shall bring thee unto Egypt, Again, with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. That is deep. If you do not obey Yahweh, thy Elohim, and learn of him, and seek him while he may be found, love him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. Love thy neighbor as thyself. He will take back, take you back down into Egypt or that carnal mind, and no man will buy you. You are bought with the price in the Messiah. If you turn back to those things, there will be no more sacrifice for sin. I admonish you, brethren, to seek the truth and the reality of these things. It is eternal life to know. Hallelujah. Ooh, okay, I'm done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> goodness gracious, as I was reading it, I was like, goodness gracious, that's time to everybody's testimony that I already gave a uh, goodness gracious. That's time to every, even the name and everything. I was like, goodness gracious. Yahweh, I see you, okay? That's right. All right, who wants to go next? Who wants to go next? Hands, Mike, you want to bring me that baby? Yeah, yeah, on my way with him. Okay. Oh my! Let me move everything out the way. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, what's the name? Let me keep you like that, that dwelling. You want to see Moses and Noah? All right. Good evening, everybody. And um, before I start, I just want to say, man, I'm just super, super edified by what the Spirit expressed through every speaker this evening. And um, just, just thankful, and uh, just thankful for Yahweh's mercy, um, for you know, just endowing us and blessing us with this knowledge and this wisdom and this understanding. So, with that said, I will begin. Uh, conception and wisdom will be the words I work with this week, as they beautifully express how Yahweh formed the angelic and material creation. Let's start with the definition for conception. Conception means the process of becoming pregnant, involving fertilization or implantation or both. Begin, uh, beginning also means the capacity, function or process of forming or understanding ideas or abstractions or their symbols, a general idea, a complex product of abstract or reflective thinking, the sum of a person's ideas and beliefs concerning something, the originating of something in the mind. Now, Let's get the definition for wisdom. The quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. The soundness of an action or decision 
with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The body of knowledge and principles that develops within a specified society or period. So, Yahweh in his pure spirit state conceived the purpose, pattern, and plan in how he would manifest in a discernible shape and form, which is incorporeal without flesh and blood. He went on to create all things according to that pattern and plan to methodically execute his plan through Yahshua the Messiah, which is him in corporeal or flesh and blood. And it's through Yahshua to reconcile all things back unto himself to return back unto his pure spirit state. It pleased Yahweh to do this and to glorify himself in this manner. Now, Yahweh is knowledge, wisdom, intelligence, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. These attributes that Yahweh is, they came together in order to take on a shape and form as Elohim. The attributes are what spirit is, which is Yahweh. The attributes are in harmonious accord with one another. Proverbs 3, 19 through 22 says this, <clears throat> Yahweh by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. So intelligence came together with knowledge, conceived the purpose, pattern and plan, and it was wisdom and understanding that applied that knowledge to form the heavens, the universe, the depths and life as we know it. It was his love for his offspring manifested throughout the entire creation, which expresses the beauty of Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh purposed within himself that he show forth his power, mercy, and judgment by operating two mysteries, which manifest his justice. And all this, his power, foundation, and strength is exemplified through the material creation by the planetary structures and functions, everything in the universe is patterned and operates according to his commandment. I am truly in awe of his greatness and his power. So intelligence is the source and knowledge, wisdom, love, etc. all of the attributes which are spirit are the substance. Intelligence is the source from which all attributes that is spirit is embedded with. That's the plurality of Yahweh. He is source and substance. He is intelligence. He is knowledge and love. He is beauty and justice. That's what he is and that's what spirit is. Genesis. 1 and 26 reads, and, Yah, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Well, who and what is the us and our he is referring to? These attributes, as they are commonly called, are more than just words in the dictionary. They are living, eternal, life-giving spirit 
They are Yahweh. And that's what you are too. That's what framed and fashioned the universe. And that's what formed you. Isaiah 44 and 24 states, Thus saith Yahweh thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am Yahweh that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. It is intelligence, knowledge, and wisdom that formed you in your mother's womb. Your mother didn't have anything to do with that. That's Yahweh that formed each man. And it is, and it is, it, it is him that is in each man, causing him to breathe and have his well-being. Now, just as Elohim was conceived by Yahweh from pure spirit, Yahweh conceived you from pure spirit and formed you within the womb while you were being formed. You can't see anything unless you were an, uh, unless you use an ultrasound, which provides a visual of the baby within the womb. This correlates to Elohim being seen only in divine visions and revelations. When Yahweh manifested in the flesh in the world as Yahshua through a virgin in the 4,000th year, it's likened unto a baby entering the world after it's fully formed at the 40-week mark. So the conception of a baby from a natural standpoint is a type and a shadow of the true conception of principles and truth the Messiah truly is. From a spiritual standpoint, that is how one is born again or born from above. The truth and principles and doctrine of Yahshua the Messiah is shaping and forming you. When the gospel is preached unto you, that's the words sowing seed in your heart and mind, as it states in Mark, the fourth chapter, concerning the sower and the seeds. That's the reality of conception right there, right within you. All that you see in the world are types and shadows of the true reality. Now, wisdom is the application of all this, is the application of all this the knowledge and understanding that, it, that Yahweh is. As we read earlier, by wisdom hath he founded the earth. Wisdom is Yahweh. It is substance that's living and eternal. Proverbs 7 and 4 says this, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, so as we mentioned, the reference to us and our in Genesis 1 and 26 earlier in this report, it's imperative that we understand that we are this substance and this substance is us. Not just limited to wisdom, but all the attributes collectively. We are a manifest version of these attributes. It's salvation to return back unto this substance by being translated spiritually and psychologically into it through the preaching of the gospel. Allow me to read something for you. John 6, 53 through 63, it says, Then Yahshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living father hath sent me and I live by the father, so he that eateth me even shall live, even, sh even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread 
shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Yahshua knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, do if this offend you. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, let me say this. Whatever image you have of Yahweh in pure spirit, whatever image you have of Elohim, whatever image you have of Yahshua, remove it from your mind. As long as you are thinking of an image of him on his throne or in heaven or on a cross, you won't come to the reality of him in spirit and in truth. We must wholly accept that spirit is wisdom and knowledge, intelligence, etc., and fully embrace, fully embrace it as it is without, as it is without adding our understanding or our knowledge, our experience, our disposition. This truth and reality doesn't conform to you, you conform to it. Lean not to your own understanding and don't reject the truth. I'll close with this. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 through 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. Now we have, now we have received not the spirit of the, of the world, but the spirit which is of Yahweh, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of Yahweh that he may teach it? But we have the mind of the, of the Messiah. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in the Messiah. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as, the, even as Yahweh gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but Yahweh gave the increase. Yahshua expressed that it was the Father in him that did the works. He is referring to the spirit in him. That's who he is. John 14 and 10 says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. When the gospel is being preached according to the law and the prophets, it is not of ourself. It's the spirit that teaches and expresses. That's wisdom and knowledge speaking, which is Yahweh 
And if you are one with that knowledge and wisdom, then you and the Father are one through Yahshua Messiah. You are Yahweh, or in layman terms, you are wisdom, intelligence, knowledge manifest. It is eternal life to know and understand this. Matthew 11 and 27 says, all things are delivered unto me of my father, and no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son, and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. It truly takes Yahshua to reveal these things to you right within you. Hopefully, the, the, hopefully these things were, were expressed in a way to be easily understood. Hallelujah. 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 Very good. All right. Anybody else? There's a chance to transition with uh oh, be careful. Oh, sorry, here you go. Very good. I thoroughly enjoyed class. Even listening to his again, I realized Y'all, ooh, the unity of the spirit is something else. Everything that y'all were showing me today, everybody touched on mm -hmm. part of, like, I'm talking about same scriptures. I mean, it was all, like, it all linked to each other. Like, that is just beautiful. Y'all were something there. Mm -hmm. right. Awesome. Any you questions don't, don't or comments? I have a mm -hmm. comment. Uh, mm -hmm. in, um, in addition to what you just said, Carla, it's so beautiful because you don't have to worry about, uh, leaving something out because when you're working on your report if you're like me you end up with 10 pages if you keep going and then you have to keep taking out taking out taking out taking out and then but mm -hmm. it's perfect because everybody covers that that you wanted to cover but but you know you had a you know a limit so it's just beautiful mm -hmm. how that you don't have to worry about because unit of the spirit is going to take care of everything that needs to be covered and still some is mm -hmm. going to be left you know that but Right, right, that. right. Oh, yeah. I was telling Carla, everybody was hitting on stuff in my little paper. I'm like, mm -hmm. I even sent her a message to tell, tell Mike to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything was just all, oh, it was just so interconnected. It was, it was a unity. It was a unity. Mm -hmm. And how we you know it's not. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. You know what? I mean, all the definitions today I, I stumbled across maccabees right and i'm listening to it because that's a that's a, a part of the history we don't have in you know i'm in, in my bible rather and what really is is getting me is understanding the story and it's like yahweh has us in school down here understanding you know the definition of words and it's amazing you know because we're one mm -hmm. mind and for someone let's, let's look these words up Y'all, I ain't got a dictionary. I'm sorry. But anyway, mm -hmm. seeing. And I know that during the time, I guess, uh, once, like 170, 169 AD, how Israel was compassed about with all these different nations, the envying that came. This is after uh, Greece, you know, took over Persia. And think about it. They've taken all those lies, all those deceptive images of, of Satan because we look at the images. We look at the projection because Satan is like to Eve, you know, Yahweh knows that if you disobey him, now he's, you know what I'm saying? He's teaching us to mm -hmm. obey the father, the source, you know, not a counterfeit, you know, not somebody that's going to break up the home, you know, all those words of adultery, all right? And, and listen to Maccabees today, evil Jews were always undermining the people in Jerusalem who were hanging on by their teeth. And we can think about this school that's the only truth on this earth coming out of where y'all we put the doc in, in this school for us to learn. Oh. Words, you guys. The words that have been twisted. Powering on. You know, ready I'm just so grateful. Yeah. I'm so gr grateful, even though it may be a few. Tonight was powerful. I just want to say tonight was powerful. I'm here screaming. It's just mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, ma'am. And just to show that it really is about the spirit and not the vessels, even for the young adults, 
that joined tonight, they had limited time to get there. They didn't have as much time as we did, but even theirs tied in to everything. So, you know, it's not about the vessels. Y'all would set, and that's how class is supposed to go. Y'all would set the tone with the name and title. That's like, that's how, it's, it's just, I, when I saw the unity, it was, man, it's just, man, it yeah. was, and then Alex, what, when Alex got into what he was talking about, we actually had this conversation earlier about death and life and things like that. And some of the same scriptures that he got were the same ones that um, I used earlier today in the conversation we had earlier. Like it, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Go ahead. One mind. Uh, uh-huh. Go on, Alfred. I was going to say this too because it was beautiful. Because after I couldn't get unmuted, I was muted. I immediately, the Holy Spirit calmed me down. And y'all, he told me, it's going this way for a reason. When I heard Kobe, I said, I was just overjoyed. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, at that point, I had I had committed to y'all. I said, well, it's going just like you planned it, y'all. And so I'm happy to know that everybody had the same spirit and was conscious of what was going on. In the presence, you know. Yep. The beautiful Nothing thing. Order. The beautiful thing is, it just goes to prove again that it's only one teacher. We all have the same teacher, so it's mm-hmm. the teacher that's teaching us. So we have to say the same thing because it's coming from the same source. That's and right. it was beautiful the way it's. But if you forget one thing, another member of the body will pick it up. So you don't have to worry right. about it. And that's so beautiful. I'm I'm just really overjoyed. I mm-hmm. truly enjoyed it. And uh, the things that was spoken about is things I've been thinking about. And how does uh, the son reveal the father? By manifesting those divine attributes which are intangible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. You guys know it's what beautiful. the lie is being perpetuated because people who are leaving out of the churches because Yahweh, as Dr. Kennedy say, flat as a fritter. Everybody mm-hmm. knows that you lied to in these organized churches, okay? So now, you know, the, the deception. They say they may have to call off their mass deception of um, projecting, meaning that we can see it physically, holograms and stuff like that. Because you want to know the, the, the devices of, of, of the, of the uh, adversary. So you won't be carried off, you know? And yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's right. He's controlling all that too. And as he has prepared us for the things that we're seeing now, he'll prepare us for that as well. So because see, we are not where the world is. We're definitely not there. I wanted to give this one thing here as everybody was speaking and uh wanted to give uh first Corinthians first Corinthians 12, 13 for by one spirit. Are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit? For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? But the point of the matter is is that as uh, uh, Dr. Watson was saying, we are all in that one body and one spirit, and everybody has this portion to do, which is bringing the body into full measure of the Messiah so that we may all go home. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Good Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll go ahead and conclude with our thousand. We, um, we will not have class Monday. We will not have the basics and foundation class this Monday. It'll be next Monday. So we're still going to keep the same word. Um, I already know which two I'm going to deal with next time. So it won't be this Monday coming up. It'll be next Monday. Um, oh, I say I know which two. Yahweh may change again like he did this time. I had other two other words in mind before today. So um, if you guys want to participate, you could choose two of these words. Or if you can, if you only got one, you can choose one. No matter, just pick some words from this um, list here and give a ten to twelve minute. I'm gonna say twelve to fifteen minute report on the words um, that you choose, and we'll just go from there. I'm excited. I think we'll be eating on these words for a minute.
And it's so beautiful how they all tie in together. Like you can't talk about one without the other, to be honest with you. That's right. You can't talk about life and you can't talk about life and death without without talking about carnal. That's right. Or without talking about the purpose. Or the mystery. Yeah. Or spirit. Can't talk about no without talking about wisdom or ignorance. Idolatry go along with sin and it's just image, all that ties in together, name and title, all of it goes hand in hand. It's just Mm. It's wonderful. I enjoy it. Thank you guys gonna, for participating. Mm-hmm. I should say, I'm going to have to start writing down the words when the speaker says uh, what his words are because when they get into it, I'm forgetting what word they're on because they're all <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I had to do. I wrote down um, everybody's words because I was like, no, nah, because if I don't write them down, I'm not going to remember what they, because it's going to all tie together. I ain't going to know which words they chose. But yeah. It is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, if nothing else, we'll go ahead and conclude with the doxology. Um, and we will have class Sunday. Um, I'm anticipating class on Sunday, normal class on Sunday. All right. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. And I will have um, some of my young adults will continue to participate with us on Mondays until I can get back to a normal schedule with them. Um, so, Kobe. And Alex, thank you guys for um, participating tonight. Hopefully we can get some more of your classmates to join us. If y'all can encourage them to do, you know, do the same thing, that'd be awesome. Um, but I will send a um, screenshot of the words to send to the whole group and see if maybe you guys want to participate. All right, here we go. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, to Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 All, right. all right. Love y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.